This video will discuss catalysis in chemical kinetics. So what we saw in our earlier video on the temperature dependence of rate constants is that usually when we increase the temperature of a reaction, the rate constant will go up and thus the rate of the reaction will go up. So often at a given temperature, our reaction isn't going fast enough and we want our reaction to go faster. But unfortunately, we can't always raise the temperature. For example, in biological reactions that use enzymes, we saw that if you go, if you go too high in temperature, you'll denature the enzyme, it'll unfold, and your reaction can't occur. So we don't always have the option of raising the temperature, and maybe something else will happen. Maybe there's some reagent which might explode if you get too hot. There, there might be some problem with going to a higher temperature. So what we need sometimes is an alternative to increasing the temperature to increase our reaction rate. That's where catalysts come in. So a catalyst is a species that participates in a reaction without being consumed. But typically a catalyst is going to help the reaction occur much, much faster. So a catalyst doesn't change the net energy change of the reaction, but it does make the energy of activation go down by a significant amount. Two different kinds of catalysts are homogeneous catalysis, that is where the catalyst is in the same phase as our reactants. So for example, if you're dissolved in aqueous solution, um, some biological target is dissolved in aqueous solution, as is our enzyme, that would be homogeneous catalysis, if it's dissolved in solution or whether they're both gases. Alternatively, heterogeneous catalysis is where your catalyst is a different phase than your reactants. For example, if you have some gas phase reaction where your catalyst is a solid metal surface. All right, so let's assume we have two pathways here to produce a product from a given reactant. We have the uncatalyzed pathway, R goes to P with reaction constant, or rate constant K. Or we have the alternative, R plus a catalyst, goes to the product plus a catalyst with the rate constant of K cap. So let's look at what how this affects the rate when we have this alternative pathway. So our reaction rate, which is minus dr dt, change in the concentration of the reactant with respect to time, that's equal to, well, there are two different ways that we can consume this catal this reactant, as I've already put the negative sign there. We can consume it through reaction K, which depends on concentration of R. So, or we can consume it through the catalytic mechanism, K cat times R times C. So dr dt, the change in the concentration of R with respect to time, is equal to the negative concentration of that reactant times the uncatalyzed rate constant K plus the catalyzed rate constant K cat times the concentration of our catalyst C. So what is often the case is that the rate constant of the catalyzed reaction is much, much, much greater than the rate constant of the uncatalyzed reaction. So we'll notice that this reaction is still first order in our reactant. So both of them are first order in R, so we factor that out. So it doesn't change the, reactant, the reaction's dependence on R. But note that it is also first order, react, first order in our catalyst, whenever k cat is much greater than k. So often, since k cat is so much higher than k, the result is that even at low concentrations of our catalyst, k cat times c is still very large, and thus our reaction, our rate of change of our reactant's concentration is still much greater whenever that catalytic mechanism is there. So we'll look at um, a reaction coordinate diagram here, where we're going to look at the energy as a function of reaction coordinate for the uncatalyzed mechanism and the energy as a function of reaction coordinate for the catalyzed mechanism. So note that in each case the reactants and the products are at the same energy. So we see that delta, delta E of reaction doesn't change. But what we do see there is when the, rack, when the catalyzed rate constant is much greater, the activation barrier of the catalyzed rate of, of the catalyzed reaction is much lower. So delta E of activation is greater than delta E cat of activation. 
So our transition state for the catalyzed pathway is much lower in energy than our transition state for the uncatalyzed pathway. But as we saw from our, um, from our video on activation barrier, a small change in the activation barrier can result in a big, big change in the observed rate constant that we see. And in fact, even catalysts which have a mild decrease to our activation barrier can often result in enormous increases to the effective rate of reaction.